I just wanted to pick up a little bit on, on what's already been said. Uh, Gemma, early on in the meeting, talked about uh, trusting the Lord. Um, and uh, um, <laughs> Christina picked up on that as well. Uh, and there was a real sense of, uh, you know, that, that bit of, yeah, I still know it in my head, but because of life, it, it, it kind of gets jumbled up. But we have to trust the Lord. Uh, and... I think what's, uh, part of what I'm going to say today is going to back that up too. And I love it when God is on the move, you know, in these ways. But it is about trusting the Lord and um, just hearing what he says and believing it. Uh, for those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, then we can believe that it's true because Jesus said it. Uh, so keep that in mind as we, we talk uh, and go through uh, this chapter and verse, uh, sorry, this verse this morning. So we're going to look at uh, Matthew 7, verse 12, uh, which is uh, called the Golden Rule, and we're going to think a little bit more about that in the next few minutes. So uh, I'm going to read uh, it from um, the NIV to start with, uh, and I wanted to... Uh, read the rest, the, the bit that Richard did read last week and stopped just at uh, 11. I want you to read that as well because I believe it sets the context for what we're going to be talking about within uh, uh, verse 12. So let's read it together. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through to 12. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone, and I love the all-inclusivity here, we, we really value that, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. All very positive things that we looked at last week. Goes on to say, which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And this is the verse we're looking at. And it starts with the word so, it could be therefore. Because of all that's just gone on before it, so, in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. And this is the golden rule that we're going to be looking at. Now we read those uh, verses, those earlier verses, because it does tell us the context in which we're uh, going to be looking at these verse, this verse. And the context is of a perfect, loving, good, heavenly Father. It's a father who invites us to ask him for good things. And he's a loving and a good heavenly father who delights in giving us, giving his children, us, his children, good gifts. And let's good, it's good to remind ourselves that that is what we are. We are his children. For those of us who know, love and trust the Lord Jesus as our saviour, we're his children and we are the ones who he delights in giving these really good gifts. So, what about these golden rules? What about rules? Um, I think most of us may have heard uh, the saying, don't get mad, get even. And before I had a sore throat, that came out a lot better. Now this has become a mantra for, or a rule of life for quite a few people. It was attributed to uh, being created by a guy called Joseph P. Kennedy, who just happened to be the father of John F. Kennedy, the ex-president of the United States. And John himself was known to use this quite regularly, and I suspect it was used more regularly when uh, uh, the Russians threatened to invade in the Cold War or Cuba and the likes. Don't get mad, get even. Um, so 
This is now a rule that I know is used by many in life. I used to have a colleague of mine who put this regularly into practice, which wasn't a great blessing, I have to tell you. <laughs> because if you upset him, boy, would he know how to upset you. Uh, and he wouldn't get mad, but he did, in his view, get even. It's a rule whereby we take it upon ourselves, he took it upon himself, to judge others and to administer his own kind of justice. His justice on those who had hurt him, he was going to hurt them. It was a, I'm not going to let you get away with anything type of attitude. Uh, he wouldn't stew on it, or wait for the law, or um, any other justice to take place. He would take action, and he would get his own back and hurt the way he had been hurt. He would, as it were, get even with them. <coughs> and sadly, that's all too common in life. We see this all too common in life. Now, I don't know for yourself whether you have a rule of life. Quite often we do, don't we? We have these little things in our head that are a rule in our lives. And if you do, I'd be quite interested to hear them afterwards. Don't shout out now, because it could be a long day. But uh, it'd be good to hear what your rule of life is. We, uh, while I was looking this up, I found uh, a guy called Jordan P. Peterson who realised that how important uh, for many people in their lives is to have a rule of life. And he did some research and he came up with 12 rules of life that he figured summed up uh, what most people's uh, rules of life were. And I thought it would be just a little bit of fun to go through them and to see what you think and see whether, actually, one of these, whether these could be your rule of life. So the first one is, stand up straight with your shoulders back. Good advice, helpful for your back. Well, I don't know if it's life-changing. Number two, treat yourselves like someone you are responsible for helping. Kind of a little bit selfish, maybe, uh, but, but, you know, Okay. Now, this one I found a bit of a challenge. Make friends with people who want the best for you. Um, I actually knew someone once, I still do actually, who told me that uh, they were only friends with people they felt could benefit them. Uh, they didn't have time for anybody that didn't benefit them. They um, obviously didn't feel I benefited them because I rarely hear for them at all. So. <laughs> so number four, where are we up to? Number four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to someone else today. I guess it's not bad advice, isn't it? It's be who God has made you to be. That's okay. Uh, I'd be quite happy with that. Um, and don't compare yourself with others. But it's pretty self-introverted in, you know, introverted looking, isn't it? Pretty inward looking. Let's see if we can do this one. Yay! I like this one. Do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Hands up, but no, <laughs> sorry. But you know the thing I've noticed when I look at the, when my children, if they do something that I think, ooh, don't like that. Do you know the trouble is? I recognise myself in that. I can see where they get it from. Uh, so I have to be really careful in, uh, in that one. Here we go, number six. Set your house in perfect order before you criticise the world. Similar to a biblical one that says, take the plank out of your own eye before you remove the, try and remove the splinter out of your friend's eye. So that's quite a good one. Number seven. Pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. I'm not really sure about that. It's, uh, I, I guess we all want meaning in life, and uh, you, know, you don't just want to do things because it's an expedient thing to do. You want to do it because it's meaningful. So again, that's okay. This one's a tricky one. Tell the truth, or at least don't lie. Anybody know any politicians? <laughs> it made me think of them straight away, you know. We don't quite tell a lie, but it ain't exactly the truth. Well, actually, if they'd have stopped at the first bit, tell the truth, I'd have been up for that one completely. Where do we go? Number nine. Assume that the person you're listening to might know something you don't. I do that all the time. That's a, that's a rule of life for me. I assume you all know a lot more than I do, and uh, I want to hear what you've got to say. So that's a, that's a good one. Uh, but again, it's still quite self-centred, isn't it? I want to grow in what I understand. This one is a rule for uh, preachers. Be precise in your speech. Leave it at that. 
This is one of great sense. Whoops, sorry. Like that one? Do not bother children when they're skateboarding. Is that right, Will? You can be dangerous, yeah? <laughs> and this one is uh, one which I definitely don't agree with. Pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. But isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? You look at those 12 <coughs> rules of life and you think, really? This is what people want to base their life on? It's important to see what's others, what others call important and become a way of life to them. I'm sure there are lots of people that live their lives according to one of those 12 rules. Now, none of them seem wrong in and of themselves, except the last one, of course, because I'm allergic to cats, so that is definitely wrong. You mustn't do it. And many of them, though, to me, seem very, very selfish and looking how to benefit yourself. Um, they're not particularly bothered about others, but focused on self. And the truth is, as far as I can see, they won't really make a huge difference in your own life. I certainly don't think they'll make a difference to the lives of people around you. And even more so, I don't think they'll be world-changing in any way, shape or form. <coughs> and eventually they will be found out for what they are, truly selfish. So today we're going to look at a rule for life in the Bible. So this one we know is true, right? This one we know is good to run with. Now this rule turns the self-seeking rules of the world completely on its head. And I don't know if you've been following, which I hope you have, the whole Sermon on the Mount stuff. It turns life upside down, doesn't it? You know, the way of the world, it just turns it upside down. And this is what this does, exactly that. I read it earlier from the uh, NIV. Um, but I'm going to read it now from a version of the Bible called The Message. Uh, because I think it just helps to make it slightly, well, clearer. certainly did for me. Yo, there we go. So here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behaviour. So it's pretty obvious what it is. This is the way we should act. Ask yourself, what do you want people to do for you, which is may be thought to be a bit selfish, possibly. But here comes the turn it on its head time. Then, grab the initiative and do it for them. And if you add that all up, it equals God's law and prophets, the Old Testament, the Word of God. And this is what you get. So this is a guide for our way of life. So vastly different from the world's way. Not looking for self, but working out what is good from God's point of view and what uh, that we can bless others with. So what is a real blessing? How do we, how do you, how do I want to be treated by others? Because actually that's the measure by which you should be doing it to, your, to others. So I thought a little bit about this and thought, what do I particularly want? How do I want to be treated? And this is a, a simple list that I come up with. So I want to be treated with love and respect. Anybody here not want to be treated by love and respect? Yeah? We all want to be treated with, by love and respect for who I am. I want people to care for my well-being, the, how I am, and my welfare, how I'm doing. That's how I want to be treated. I want, to be, I want people to show me grace and forgiveness when I get things wrong, because believe you me, I do, loads and loads. I want people to show me grace and forgiveness when I get things wrong. And added to that, I'd like them to, well... Be patient with me. You know, cut me some slack in life. I can be really annoying. Just ask my wife. I want to be shown kindness in every situation. Not just in when I'm doing something nice or whatever, but be kind to me when I'm maybe annoying you a bit or when I haven't done what you've asked me to do immediately and I've forgotten. I want to be shown a little bit of kindness 
I'd also like to be, um, I'd like people to be gentle with me, not aggressive. I quite like that. It's, you know, being kind and gentle. I'd like people to show and to share with me goodness and joy, happiness. Now, I want to ask you, and I'm pretty sure you do recognise, where do you think I got those from? Yeah? They are the fruit of the Spirit. It is God's way of showing us how we treat one another. This is what we should be doing to others because that's what I want done for me. And I want to see the fruit of God's Holy Spirit at work in my life, in your lives, and therefore into our communities, into our families around us. And I just wonder how that would change things. What differences that would make in our own personal lives, in the lives, our life at work, the way we treat our colleagues at work, the way we treat our neighbours, our friends, our uh, family. If we were to live this out, if we were to do this to others, because this is what we'd like done to us. I mean, I hope that's what you would like done to you. I hope that's a sort of a bit of a standard that you would like done for you. And I think this is what God's golden rule of life looks like. We will look a little later at what it means uh, about summing up the law and the prophets, but to be honest, that's a whole new sermon and the way time is going already, we might just skip over that. But for now, let's just concentrate on what we're going to look at as this thing known as the golden rule. Now, I think the title itself suggests that uh, it is something rather special. Gold in and of itself is special, isn't it? It's, it makes you th- think of something very, very precious. Something that's very valuable. Something that's, well, I love the picture of purification of gold in the fire. Where the, the fire of life burns up the, uh, burns the, uh, the gold, it molt, melts it. And then the muck, the dross, rises to the top. And it's skimmed away and thrown and becomes more and more pure. And it is pure gold that is worth so much. It's still a, a it's called the gold standard, isn't it? We still, uh, our, our treasuries somewhere have got a load of gold in them because it's the standard by which we set our economic system. So it's something worth having, something that's more precious than the treasure found in a field or pearls of great value as described in Matthew 13, 44 to 46. These were things that people sold everything to buy. It's that precious. Give everything else away for these things. This golden rule, I believe, is really precious and life-changing and worth giving up everything for. Now, many, if not most, world religions excuse me, around the world have a golden rule. And in fact, uh, over 200 of the world's religions from around 80 different countries around the world got together in 1893 and they formed a parliament of world religions. And it's still going today. I don't think that is a recent picture, but (laughs) I don't suppose the dresses have changed much at all anyway. And in the recent past, people like the Dalai Lama, um, Desmond Tutu, Jimmy Carter, the Christian ex-president of the United States, has spoken at the Parliament of uh, World Religions. And as part of the Declaration of Commitment, uh, the very top statement they come up with was this. We must treat others as we wish others to treat us. Now, I reckon that should sound a little bit familiar to us. I can only imagine how long it took them to come up with that uh, because we as elders spent months on trying to come up with a short vision statement and it was really, really difficult. But with 200 different religions, I can only imagine it being really difficult. But we have here a group of 200 of world religions uh, coming up with uh, a similar conclusion to that as we have in the uh, Bible in Matthew 7, verse 12. So it seems to work for many different people, doesn't it? But... Only we 
have the Holy Spirit. Only we have God who can help us to live this out. No other religion, no other faith in the world has the Holy Spirit except us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're glad to have that because it ain't easy. Now, often uh, rules of, uh, in religions are often quite negative, much formed in a much more negative way. For example, don't do to anyone that you wouldn't want done to yourself. Which I guess is kind of similar, but it's, again, it's simply avoiding something nasty, uh, doing something nasty to anybody, so you don't get anything nasty done to you. It's, it's, again, it's a selfish, it's, it's turned in on itself. You're not blessing anybody. It doesn't bless them at all, does it? It just avoids something unpleasant. Whereas God is encouraging us to do something really, really positive to others. And that is to bless them. Anybody here not want to be blessed? No? I do. So therefore, go and do unto others as you would have them do to you. So, if we want to see blessings in our life, then get out there and bless those around us. Now, I'm not suggesting that we can earn our blessings any more than we can earn our salvation. These blessings are a grace gift of God. And they're from our loving Heavenly Father that we read about earlier, who delights in giving us these good gifts. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get a drink of water. <coughs> mm. Yeah, so I really believe that God expects us to actively pursue this. That that which we would like to see from others, he expects us to do to others. Jesus, as always, has upped the ante. doesn't just leave us with, do something, uh, don't do to others something nasty. He turns it around, he says, bless people first, even if they don't want to bless you. So not to settle <coughs> with, uh, not just doing something negative, but doing something actively positive and blessing others, even if they don't deserve it. You'll remember from elsewhere in the Bible, it tells us where to go the extra mile, you know, do the extra bit <coughs> to bless those who perhaps don't even like you. <coughs> so how much more different is that? How much more does this show others around the world, around us, the love of God. They don't deserve it. Actually, nor do we. But it really is showing God's grace to an undeserving people. <coughs> <coughs> and as we do this, then they, the world will see that we are truly disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> because we're living our lives the way in which he uh, lived his and we're emulating that, and we're becoming more like him. Because we're living out what he has shown us, that undeserved love. So I hope you can start to see how this can be so life-changing. It's so different to what we see in the world. A world where selfishness reigns, where at best a world, we're in a world where a scratch, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours is a bit of a mantra. We'll only do it if it benefits us. Um, just a brief story, really. I once had a, or we once had a neighbour who uh, was very, very difficult. She made our lives as a family a bit of a misery. I won't go into the details because it doesn't help, but it wasn't pleasant. And one day there was a terrible storm and several trees in her, <coughs> her garden fell down and threatened the lives of some very rare and valuable birds that she bred. She was distraught. She just didn't know what to do. So I got together with a Christian brother and uh, went round there with a chainsaw. To be honest, we had fun. But we cut the, chopped the trees down, up and uh, tidied the garden up and made it all safe and made sure the birds were safe and uh, okay. And when we'd finished and just as we were leaving, she drew alongside me and she asked me, why have you done this? Why are you being so kind when I'm so nasty to you? I'd like to have said, because the Bible says do unto others, as you know, but I didn't. But I said something similar. What I said was, 
I did it because Jesus calls us to love others as ourselves. And in this way, I could show you the love of Jesus. Now, if this was Hollywood, she would have instantly given her life to the Lord. Uh, We would have lived happily ever after, but it didn't work out that way. Um, The reality was she still continued to be difficult, not quite as nasty and vindictive as she was, um, but we got on better. But again, you can see here the difference, can't you, of doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. I wanted to serve her, I wanted to show her Jesus' love uh, by doing something positive, uh, even though she'd not shown us any of that herself. And I believe that's God's way, and so it should be our way, and it is so different, the way of undeserved love. It is the way of the greatest commandment. When Jesus was asked by a Pharisee, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. By the way, that first bit comes from Deuteronomy 5. So this is all in the Old Testament. Uh, This is all being lived out now. Uh, Sorry, Deuteronomy 6. And uh, then Jesus went on to say, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. It sums up all that is happening in the Old and the New Testament. The law and the prophets and Jesus becoming the fulfilment of that. So we see what it means then. There is a sermon involved in that and I'm certainly not going to do it now because uh, time is running away with us. But I hope you can start to see that just how that commandment Uh, and do unto others as you would have do unto them, starts to come together, to dovetail together. We have a loving God, loving, and we love each other, and we're doing good to others as we would want done to us. So the instruction to love the Lord our God uh, that Jesus has quoted um, is following on from the time of the um, Mosaic Law, when we got the uh, Ten Commandments. Uh, So God's showing us how we should behave, uh, and it's summed up with, just love God and love others. Just do unto others what you would have do unto you. It is that same love. It is the way it sums it all up uh, in the law and the prophets. So these are the most important instructions to us, which I believe cannot just be life-changing for ourselves personally, But I think, in fact I believe, it can change communities. Not only can it change communities, who knows where that reaches out into this world. And these, because they're from the word of God, because they are from Jesus himself, are life-changing words. And I love the way that the message puts it, where it says, ask yourself what you want people to do for you. And it's good to spend a little bit of time thinking about that. I enjoyed doing that. And then it says, go and do it. Well, I've got to tell you, folks, it ain't easy. Um, I I tried it on... uh, Well, I I tried... Once I knew I was doing preaching on this, I thought, I'm going to give this a go. You know, be definite uh, uh, about it. And um, so one of the ways I, I decided to do it was in my driving... So on the way, I'd go and pick my uh, grandchildren up in Clapham. And uh, on the way, I'd be letting people out in front of me, uh, in side roads. I wouldn't uh, scream and shout when somebody cut me up um, because I figured, no, I do these kind of things. You know, I I, I wouldn't want them to do that to me. And so um, uh, day by day, I, I could feel it changing. And I honestly could feel a real peace in my heart. I felt as if, actually, yeah, this is nice. It's a lot calmer, it's a lot nicer. Uh, And I just think it was really the the Holy Spirit in me. So one day, folks, you are going to read about the road to Clapham (laughs) because it's going to say, this is the best mannered road ever. Okay, time has beaten us. The conclusion then is that we need Jesus. We can't do this on our own. If we want to live a life that can transform ourselves, that can transform those around us, and who knows where else, 
then we need to invite Jesus into our lives. If you haven't already done that, then I would say today is the day to invite Jesus into your life, to receive the Holy Spirit, because you cannot do this on your own. As much as you may think this is a good rule of life and I'm going to give it a go, I promise you, you will not last more than a week. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, it can be life-changing and transforming. So we need to receive the Holy Spirit. Let's go through that. Right. (coughs) So, we need God. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives to enable us uh, to live this golden rule. And I want to leave you with a challenge today. That challenge that's on the wall, on on the screens there. Ask yourself. Yeah? Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. But don't leave it there, because it says then. Go out and do it to others. And let's see how different that makes our lives and the lives of those around us. Because I believe it's the sort of thing that can break chains, can heal hurts, can cure unforgiveness, And most importantly, I believe it destroys the work of the devil. Because this is not what he wants, folks. It's exactly the opposite to what he wants. I said earlier that Jesus turns things upside down. That's why. Because this isn't what the devil wants to see. And we should be desiring what's best for everybody. So let's go and see, folks. Let's go and see what difference it makes in the world. Let's pray together. Lord, I just thank you for your word. It's so challenging. Things that are even familiar to us become uh, new and challenging in our lives. But Lord, we want to live our lives in a way that brings glory and honour to your name. So I pray, Lord, that if there's people here today who have not uh, accepted you as Saviour and Lord, that they will make that step today to trust you and to get that help of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And for each of us, Lord, we ask for more of you so that we might live this life in a way that brings glory and honour to your name. Amen. Um, I would just mention, if uh, that is true of you and you would like uh, to be prayed with, if you have given your life to the Lord today, come along and see the prayer ministry team. They'll be uh, standing at the front here. Um, Or if you just say, I need a bit more help with this, because I know I do. Uh, Come and get prayed for and have the Holy Spirit come and bless you. Thanks.